Hi there guys, welcome back into my earth lodge. Uh, this is where I make lots of artifacts out of stones and bones, etc. And um, on this occasion, I thought I would um, bring you in because I have a new project that I'm about to start. Only this one's a bit different because I haven't seen it in real life. I was shown it in a dream, believe it or not. <laughs> I've got a few things beside me and through them, I'll be able to give you a clearer idea of what I'm about to try and attempt to do. It's a wet and rainy old day today. Um, so being in here seems like the best thing to do, really. And what you're looking at here is kind of going to give you a clue as to what I'm kind of thinking. So then. How's this all going to work? Well, first of all, we need to make a piece of flint that looks like that. Now, on the surface of it, that isn't very difficult, only if you look at this, from that angle, it's got a square section to it. And um, to get a square section, meaning this has got four sides, we're going to need to use a punch and uh, do something called box technology to actually chip that out and get a square section. And then following that, this whole thing has got to be polished. So that's going to be made out of flint. And then the handle had a kind of an image going on. This is just an old spear thrower that I made some time ago. Um, it's got the little ibex on it. And I've got a piece of um, got a piece of mammoth ivory here, which is what I'm going to use to um, put that into. So I suppose we need to think about a couple of things. We need to think about the hammer stone for knocking the big flake off first. Then we're going to need to think about the uh, copper punch, which is how they did it in the Bronze Age. I want a fairly chunky hammer stone for knocking that first flake off. Can't get much bigger than that one in my hand anyway and then um, something a little bit smaller and a soft hammer for some of the uh, secondary work once we've actually got that flake so this is just a rod, rod of wood um, and I need to turn it into copper so I'm going to use some casting sand and a box here and uh, smooth it out, press it in, close it up, pour the copper in there, then we'll have a punch. In a few of my videos, I do actually show Bronze Age technology, and uh, you could look back and um, find out how to do these things without wooden boxes and without casting sand, but actually just from the planet itself. But um, just remember this video isn't really about isn't really about casting it's about square section napping um, using a punch all I need to do here is get this nice and smooth and you can do that just by running the knife backwards and forwards like that And I'm going to use a bit of talcum powder as part and compound because um, once we've made the mould I need to open it and then I need to get the wooden punch out. So I'm going to press that in about halfway, shut the box. And pack it from this side too. You 
keep it nice and simple but then what we're going to do is we're going to hammer this because sand needs to be nice and hard hammer it again from the other side smooth it off I think we'll do that once more for luck three times later I love you Open it up, take that out, close it up, and we're ready to pour some bronze in there. So I made a copper punch before, um, and I would be using that, but I've lost it. But it was very, very mildly soft, because it was absolutely 100% pure copper, which they may have used, or they may have adulterated it a little bit. So um, that's been adulterated just a little bit. Not by weight or measure, just by guesswork. I reckon I've put about 2%, maybe maybe 3 or 4% tin in it at max. Good then. So here we are back in the earth lodge with a punch and um, it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to become clear how the punch works and it can be a little bit it can be a bit um, risky to stand near somebody who's using a punch on flint so uh, <laughs> fortunately for you the only thing that is really at risk is my camera lens but We'll see how we go. Then on top of that, what we have is, I thought it might be useful to you if I showed you what square section looks like. So this is a Danish axe, and um, they were doing this commonly in the Bronze Age to the axes in an effort to stop them splitting the handles. So, um, beautiful thing. Time to have a look at that bit of flint, I think. Incidentally, I've got a few things next to me that I've made just lately. What I have here is a flint knife in a sheath that's made out of buckskin and stitched with sinew. The stitching took over half a day just on that little sheath. And then there's the blade. And it's in an antler handle with a nettle, which is going, it's just a decorative binding, glued together with pine pitch glue. Um, following that with a big old axe this is a polished flint axe set into a U handle once again with pine pitch but on this occasion I've used a little bit of um, rawhide strapping which I soaked and then dried it on um, so that's quite a beast and then um, finally I've just made this flint tipped arrow and uh, it's on a sort of burnt look ash shaft and these are um, these are buzzard feathers it's not a turkey as in American buzzard it's a, it's um, a buzzard it's part of a um, it's one of the one of the falcon birds from the UK so uh, they've all gone successfully with a bit of luck so all this just tying a leg pad on and then we'll get you down where all the action's gonna happen. 
So I've chicken. Right, so, as an observation goes, the reason I've chosen this bit of flint is because it's good quality flint. And I would like to take this whole section here off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by giving this a little tap near the edge. Right, we're taking that off. So that be careful that I'll grab it because it's razor sharp. I can turn it over now and hit this right here. Now because it goes down a bit and then comes up it's questionable as to whether or not the piece that I'm actually after is going to come off how I want it to. But I'm going to take the risk Mate. Right. That can go to one side and this. Can come to plate. That came off. Um picture perfect. I'm not a little bit chuffed about that. I'm usually chuffed about that. Um, what I should do, probably to help you out, is draw what I'm gonna, what I intend to do on it. And then you can see, you'll see, you'll have a better picture to work with then. So remember, that's the plan. And um, I would say that. We're going to bring this round here, like that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down through here. So we're going for something like that, and I'm not sure if I said it before, but then we're going to set it into that, we'll be going on there, and this is a piece of, um, this is a piece of Siberian um, mammoth ivory, woolly mammoth ivory, I don't know its age, but that's what's all slotting together eventually, if this works. I was just going to start smacking it, but... Um, we don't want to be too hasty because there's quite a lot to say before we set out really like there's a massive amount of material to remove um, to get back to that preform uh, or to reduce the preform to release this um, it's, I don't know what to call it it's a bit like an ulu from as um, it's a bit like an ulu from a Sami culture um, but what is important is as we get closer that we've got the square section going so the way I'm visualizing what I'm going to do to achieve that is I'm going to take a lot of this area here and here I'm going to use that to set up the square section it doesn't happen instantly there's a bit of a there's a bit of a set up cost to everything but um, and there's varying heights across here and on this side there's a few other complications as well so what's important is that I do one complication at a time and keep it in a formula that's understood it won't be too long even from here before we see the copper punch coming into play so hopefully you've got the picture and um, we can start considering our way in. 
and I don't want to leave too many bumps in the wrong places considering that I'm going to be grinding this smooth at the end. Okay so I'm going to start off with a, with a pebble. I'm going to tilt that as much as I can and certain things are going to come off in a reasonably, in a reasonably random fashion like that it's just bounced off the top it's actually got moisture in there so we know that that was already cracked and that's taken us it's moved us a bit it's not too dramatic but on that occasion it's actually left a square section so that's in a lot of respects has done me a favor so we don't worry about that Now as I walk forward with these shots, this edge is actually going to lay down and become much, much, much squarer. As you can see, it's getting squarer and squarer now. Um, and we'll just do a bit of a weird twisty turn thing here. And coming from this end, which has maintained the square, but it brought us over a bit. And I think what I'm going to do now is I'm looking at the thickness on this. I could potentially take a bit of this weight out just here. We'll stick with the rock at the moment. That was useful and a bit more and then balance that out again right so there's going to be two sort of two sort of um, strikes which vary but this will give you the gist of things and what I want you to also take on board that this technique Right, was a technique that was devised in the Bronze Age and um, it was the first time it happened with flint mapping um, getting this square section going but it was quite an interesting bit of thinking all by itself so I'm going to have if you look at the angles here what I'm doing is I'm just setting it off at, a, at about 30 degrees and we'll take that first flake which is shot across the surface. Now then, this is where things get tight. So when you look here, where the copper, copper uh, punch went, what we have is we have a little negative divot just in here. So we're clamping that here. And there's different ways of clamping this, but basically, And that bit comes out there. Then we turn that round. Remember, it hasn't. It's not completely set up yet. Quite nice little flakes that are coming off too. What we're going to do? This is when it, um, as a spectator sport goes, it's somebody needs to keep out of the way because that bit goes airborne. I'm going to try and minimise what does happen. And then that goes in there. And so what's happening now is this is going from left to right and I have to keep doing that from here until this point here is prominent to them. Because otherwise I can't start this off. When you see me by face, it's quite often that you'll probably think to yourself it's amazing because he's, he, he's not even really thinking about it but because I don't, don't commonly do this it's not that I don't know what I'm doing but I've got to be very careful to um, keep things running right so that's a small um, start at showing you how the copper punch works 
Um, and also, you can all you can also tell from that that there's a lot of work to be done. <coughs> So much work that it's going to take several hours of um, finally crafting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to film certain parts of this. Um, I'm going to film the whole thing, but it's not going to become a three-hour video. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll edit in the best bits. All right. Change it to a soft hammer swipe, which was nice. It's gone right across the top. There's a risk as well, but um, good flake has come off. And if you're finding this process a little bit um, nail biting for yourself. Bear advised, just kind of nail biting for myself as well, because I'd, I'd like this piece to go. Ah, do you know? Now then, yeah. Got a choice, haven't I? Do we put the blade around here now? <coughs> I suppose we have to, don't we? Just when I was saying, <laughs> it's still very possible. It's, and all said and done, two things have happened now that I didn't want to happen, but they've set up they've set up potential successful situations for me. We'll bear with it. So I'm going to freestyle a new front edge into this before I worry about anything else. Just get. The control back. Difficult little bit, like that. I'll probably side punch across there, see how we get on with that. Go up a bit. It was a handy removal because there was a little piece here that, and um, that was hard to get out from this direction. Often tell people that Danish flint is different, has a different nature to English flint, and the kind of thing that I'm talking about is uh, the texture of it, and it's actually um, it's actually softer, and English flint can be very brittle sometimes, which makes certain applications a bit more tricky. Um, but then even in English lint you get soft and hard.
what is happening is quite nice is each time we're presenting ourselves to this the flakes are actually traveling so we're not failing what you can see is over this side I've got that lovely shaped box section the fortuitous one that was created when this flew off right and on this side we're so much thicker so technically what that means is I need to reduce this and thin this right down And one of the things, being a bit careful what I say, because every time I say something it comes true, when you're doing this you have to be a bit careful because there's a lot of impact, you can do some damage to your hands afterwards if you're not careful. That was good. So these are cutting out across here, so keep all these four arrowheads if I want you to. And that square section is becoming believable. But what I want that I haven't got yet is there comes a point where once we send some in here, as long as they don't actually go over here, then we get a return. And we could actually start that return now from back here. And while we're watching that, while you're watching this, what's important is it's not so much my skill set that we're interested in. We're interested in the skill set of the people who made the move into doing box section, you know, thousands of years ago. It seems like a, a kind of an unlikely thing to decide to do. But the truth of the matter is, is once they started finding that the copper, copper was usable, particularly when they were making arrowheads, to do lots of invasive flaking, it leads, everything kind of leads itself forward. So the door to napping um, flint with copper was already open. But some of the techniques wouldn't have been refined yet. As you can see, it kind of looks a little bit messy at the moment. And if we revisit the axe, what would be interesting is to look at the absolute control that one of these people had. So here we have the copper axe, and you can actually see really, really nice, well-controlled panel flaking from either side. You can't see what's happening on here because the ground is smooth. But on both edges, with this really crisp, straight line. Amazing achievement. There are so many things to sort out to get this all perfect. Probably why I don't film it a lot because um, we're into some heavy duty heavy duty micro detail um, there's no other way of looking at it there's a lot of turning twisting observing and so far um, there's a little bit of luck coupled with a little bit of skill but not too much apart from the, the catastrophic point where a huge chunk flew off which actually turned into a favour for me 
not too many other things that I've been trying to do have gone wrong. This run is keeping me fairly quiet. There's a few things going on, I'm not really sure if I like or not, but it's um, actually, I think it's okay. Just remember that everything that we're watching now has to eventually be ground, and some of them big flakes that have just come off have meant. I've got less to grind so I would say in a lot of respects that now the tricky work the tricky work on here now is absolutely owning these edges quite important that when I put that on there what I do is I feel how it fits so that and I'll give it a whack. What I intend to come off actually behaves as I wanted it to. So I got dark while I was napping. <laughs> One of my lights went down. Um, and uh, all apart from one edge, really. I think we've got the square section down here quite nicely. We've got the square section down here quite nicely. Here, but not so much here. And if I go much further, then I'm going to lose the scale that I'm after. And like I said, I'm going to be grinding it anyway, so we'll accept it as she is and grind it out. So just behind me what you've seen is my old earth lodge and the land around here is really sandy. We're going to be needing that for grinding the tool so that's what we're going to do now. 
as you can see, there's a heavy footfall of red deer here. This is what all these uh, footprints are. And, uh, well, we're just going to need this sand. And so I've come and found myself a nice spot in the forest. And the long journey of grinding begins. Along the back wall of my earth lodge, I have a really nice collection of ancient artifacts. And one of them, which is applicable to what we're doing right now, is this big stone here. It's called a polissoir because it's been used for polishing axes over and over and over again. This one's a really interesting one because it's been pecked all around the edges as well, because that was one of the ways that they very first started off reducing the edges so that they weren't cracking so many handles. It's actually been pecked all the way around here and polished on both sides. I'm pretty damn sure that you don't want to sit here with me and watch this whole process through. <laughs> Um, typically something like this would have taken maybe a hundred hours, um, you know, it'd be done over a month. Um, so the next tool that's required for the job is called a burin, um, and it's a tool that you could gouge with, um, made out of flint. Top of this has got to be just perfect. So let's see what we can get. That sounded right. And that is a little screamer. Look at that. And now what we'll do is we'll blunt the edges because it's a handheld tool. Just gonna, and I'm just going to um, set the shape of this right so that it goes to a nice point. Slightly too pointed at the moment. And now, the tricky bit, what turns it into a burin, rather than a blunted pointed blade, is where we literally just turn it onto its side, push down that side there, turn it over, and do it to the opposite blank. And now what we've got is we've got a pretty precise tip just here, we can use that, and that's what's going to be carving into the actual um, bone itself. And so, this is not what I'd describe as finished yet, I've got quite a lot more work to do on this, but that was the bit that I can do. Now we get on to this stage where this has got to be impregnated into here, to about there. And then all of the secondary work has got to happen on this. Now, I'm probably going to chop that bit off there. I'm going to use a saw to do that. Remember, this is mammoth ivory. And then, with its fragility as well in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot, I'm going to sand off a lot of um, what I don't want and drill out this and then where I'm going to get to is I'm going to get down to the detail that I want to put into it 
and obviously that would be a lot easier with diamond cutting tools. I'm going to try it with um, some of it with flint um, and we'll make a few burins and bits and pieces and see how they get on with it. But essentially um, I want what I saw in the dream and the exercise of proving that I can do it with flint would be probably pushing my luck um, and give me mildly unsatisfying results. So a bit, a bit of a mismatch going on here, but in the first place, I'll get that into it, bring it down a bit and see where we end up. So this is a uh, Dremel tile cutter tool, which I sometimes use. And, um, That's helping me get in there. But um, what they would have done for one of them back in the day. But with the dust, the mammoth dust, I'm not chucking that out and keeping that. I can sell that as an aphrodisiac. <laughs> no. Um, what you can do with the dust is when I'm working on the finer detail, if something goes wrong, I can put some super glue there, pour dust on it, and that will actually reconstitute itself as um, part of part of what um, I'm trying to do. So this is now on its way down, although I am going to have problems with that because the drill isn't deep enough, so I'm going to find another tool to get in there. Um, I'm hoping that you'll forgive me for bringing such a tool into one of my uh, videos uh, but the exercise of trying to get down there I don't think you would have done it like that in the stone age you know you, perhaps you would have taken a big slot out put it in but then I won't be able to get the features I want so and adding on to that when I sort of saw this thing in a dream it had a pattern on here but I can't remember the pattern which is a bit of a bugger um, so I've got to come up with something out of my head or somewhere. But once I start on it, what I'm fairly convinced of is that um, I'll kind of make it up and something will start sliding into place. That's the plan anyway. There's nothing quick about a process like this. It's delicate work. As you can see, with care and attention, this thing does work. So many fragile areas on this which is one of the reasons that I chose to um, use uh, modern machinery in the main. Every time you get a little soft, every time you get a bright white bit, the material there is super soft, chalky and powdery, as opposed to the browner bits, which are much more stable. Well then, that was fun. Um, fun for me, I hope it was fun for you. And I hope if it's the first time you've ever watched one of my movies, um, it encourages you to subscribe. And um, if you haven't already seen the feature, there is an opportunity to become a member on my channel. There'll be a link in the bottom of the post um, where you'll end up supporting me and you get certain perks for doing that as well. Um, while I've been making this, it's been leading me on to a, new, a brand new set of ideas because essentially tools like this were um, they were known to kind of come from a Sami culture and um, maybe Danish as well. And I believe that my next road trip of adventures are going to be me heading out in that direction um, to meet some of the remaining culture, the people, and maybe learn a few things, share a few things, but ultimately get a film so that I can take you there. So look out for that one, and um, cheers for sticking with me. So, bon voyage, and uh, see you again soon.